Okay, uh, we're carrying on with uh, regression, but this is quite a nice uh, extended question that has both correlation and regression in it. And the first thing it does after giving me a nice table of data, okay, is it asks me to plot a scatter diagram, which is a good idea because it will show me whether the data uh, seems to fit a straight line, which I need it to do really uh, for the uh, product row moment correlation coefficient or, or regression to make any sense at all. Um, uh, so we're going to plot it, so we need to put things like the 0.5, 1.5 on these scales. Always be careful when plotting using scales. So 5 is easy to find, this is going to be 5 here, but be careful with your 1.5. This is 5 and it's 10 small squares. So I don't see 1.5 being 1.5 small squares, because each of these small squares actually is 0 0.5. So 1.5 is going to be there. So there's my first point. Okay, and you need to plot the remaining points on that grid in the same way. And you'll get a diagram like that. And we can see that on this particular occasion, the data is astonishingly close to a straight line. So we kind of know that the value of uh, R we're going to get uh, when we do the product moment coefficient in part B, we kind of know that this is going to show almost exact positive correlation. It's going to be astonishingly close to 1. So you lob the data here onto your calculator. Remember when we're using uh, a calculator for a regression line, uh, we need to be in um, one virus for just uh, means and standard deviations, but for correlation and regression we know, need mode 2, and it helpfully t reminds me that it's y equals a plus bx is going to be the form of the equation, so I get the urge to write y equals a plus bx a plus bx, okay, not because it's part of this part of the question, but it's just, uh, I'll need that later, okay, um, and I need to select that mode too, and I get the frequency data, well sorry, the frequency column, they're all going to be one, but I get x and y values, it helpfully tells me what x and y are, so x will normally be the top row of your table, and y the bottom row of your table, so I'm going to lob those values in. So there's all the data entered onto my calculator, so I now need to get the regression equation, so I go AC, press AC, I press option, I want regression calculations, I'm going to press 3, and I get my A, B and R, which I read very carefully. Notice, for example, that value of A is negative, so don't miss the minus sign. So I can copy down that A equals um, minus uh, 0 0.471, and B equals uh, 0 0.4. 009 is 0 0.401, but the one I actually need for the first uh, uh, question that I'm being asked is that R equals 0 0.99964, so it's astonishingly close to 1. I'm actually going to record that to four significant figures, so R equals 0 0.9996 to four significant figures, which is supported by how close the uh, graph was to actually being a line. The data was very close to that line. Um, and now I've got to get the line of regression. So I've got my values of a and b, but don't forget to write out the regression of the equation in the form y equals a plus bx. Um, so I need to say y equals um, a, which is minus 0 0.471, plus bx, which is 0 0.401 times x. And I've got to plot that line uh, onto my scales here. So this is actually GCSE graph plotting skills. To um, draw the equation of a straight line, I just really need two points that will fit on um, my axes to um, to connect. Um, because these points are so astonishingly close to a line, you'll probably get away with just drawing the best straight line you can through those points. But if you're being asked to plot a line from an equation, then we should be basing that on two data points. So what I would do is I'd do a little table, I'd have two values of x. Um, I think I'm going to choose 10 and 40, maybe 10 and uh, 10 and 40. So when x is, is 10, when x is 40, I'm going to get y values using the equation of, so substitute x equals 10 into this calculator. So um, I want to do minus 0 0.471, okay, plus uh, 4, 0 0.401, plus 0 0.401 times my first x value, which is 10. So I'm going to get 3.539, 3.54. 
Um, notice the value from the original table wasn't exactly that. It was 3.4, not 3.54. So there is a tiny difference here. And I may even be able to see on my graph that I've plotted, plotted the point in a slightly different place. So changing our color, OK, on the graph I want to plot for 10. I want to find 3.54. So that was 3.5. I think it's just above that point there. OK, halfway up that small square. Um, and um, for the next one, OK, uh, I need to find um, y when x is 40. So I can easily actually just edit this line on my calculator and change that value to a 40. So I've now got 15.56 um, for my y here. So that was 15. 15.56 .5, is going to be, well, indistinguishably higher than that. I'm not sure you can really tell the difference between those points and the ones we originally plotted. Um, so we've now just got to add the line to the diagram. So here we go. Draw a nice straight line through the points. Now that business of actually substituting uh, values into the algebraic equation becomes important when the uh, graph is much more scattered because you can't just get away with drawing what looks like the line of best fit. Okay, I think I've done a reasonable job there. I'm not sure I went exactly through that point, so I might have another go if I was doing this in an exam. Okay, all right, so I've done that. But now for the fun bit. Now this, this is really important. Interpreting the values of A and B in context. Okay, so um, we know from our theory of straight lines um, y equals um, mx plus c. So y equals mx plus c. Okay, we know that m tells us the gradient and c tells us the intercept. So in y equals a plus bx, a is telling us the intercept, okay, and the y-intercept, and b is telling us the gradient. But you will get no marks for interpretation in context if you talk about gradient and the intercept, okay, or if that's all you talk about. So um, I'm going to put intercept and I'm going to put gradient, but I'm going to put them in brackets because they're not what's going to get me the marks, okay? All right, the intercept. Firstly, we need to give the value of the intercept. So what's this y-intercept value? Well, I have to go obviously read it off the equation. So what was my a value? It was minus 0 0.471. So you can at least see that this would be a minus value. So the the intercept minus 0 0.471 Okay, so what's this telling me? Well, this, remember, we haven't got labelled axes. This is the time that the fire has been turned on for, and this is, on the y-axis, is the temperature of the room. So, if we're looking here at the beginning, okay, this is the value on the y-scale that applies, or we think applies, when the value on the time scale is zero. So, this is the temperature when the time equals zero. Okay, now you can actually, that says when, uh, you can actually say this in a nicer way. You can say it's the uh, initial time. But if you learn this as a template, if you say that you quote the value and then say this is whatever that says on the, the, the vertical scale, when whatever this variable is on the horizontal scale equals naught, all you need to do is change the words temperature and time to the names of the variables in your question, and you have a contextual interpretation of the intercept. Now, for a gradient, okay, what does a gradient tell me? Well, the gradient tells me how much I go up for every time I go across by one. So, therefore, the gradient, in this case, the gradient was the value of B, which was 0 0.401. So, 0 0.401 is the increase in something when something else increases by 1. Okay, so it's the increase in something when something else increases by 1. And that statement you can always use, okay. Um, if, you've, if you've got a negative increase, you'll probably want to rewrite it after this to interpret it as being a decrease, because a negative increase is just a funny way of speaking. Um, but otherwise, you can just fill in these slots. So it's the increase in whatever's on my y-axis. So in this case, it's the increase in temperature 
temperature. When, um, whatever goes along here, that's time, when time increases by one. So in other words, it's how much hotter it gets every minute. Okay, but you can write that sentence and it's valid interpretation in context. So learn these as templates where you just slot in the names of the variables into standard statements and that will at least get you something that makes some kind of sense and you can write it more nicely afterwards. That's lovely if you do.